the Rocky Mountains were the best place to work in terms of uh, in terms of getting a, a good a good match for the alpine uh, regions in Central Europe, which is where we were staging our our uh, our alpine rescue, our uh, avalanche rescue, and avalanches are not to be trifled with. They're uh, they're very powerful. Uh, things to set loose and uh, not surprisingly nobody was very interested in having us do this in Europe so fortunately we were able to find areas in the Bridger range in British Columbia which looked much like the Alps and and these were places where we could in fact trigger avalanches because in fact it was it, it made things safer for the heli ski operations which which function there they they keep track of the snow conditions everywhere in those areas and they're they're quite happy to let loose uh, some of the snow when it gets uh, too heavy or when it's, uh, the snow condition becomes dangerous for their, for their heli skiers. So as long as we tell them what, what we're going to do, it was okay for us to, to do that and we work with some specialists. You know, in the, uh, the field. And it makes things as beautiful as, as an avalanche to watch. It's, uh, it's mesmerizing. Until you're standing there and, and, it, and it comes across the valley and, and, and envelops you, and in fact we did get we did get enveloped in a couple of the of the powder flashes. Help us! We're trapped! I, I can't see my son. We sind unter einer Lawine begraben. Raphael, sag doch bitte etwas. Raphael. Regen to Regen nine avalanche emergency. Fortunately, we Just were so able to know, cast a, 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 a real mother and child uh, as our as our victims for this uh, for this sequence. And, I remember and, uh, this really cool they sound. Were, they were right there in, in the little. Uh, you little have to go to the hospital. We Take my the advice. The best way and, uh, is by helicopter. They, The child born into a world with helicopters lives in a world where the miraculous is commonplace. A world where doctors swoop down from the sky. For generations, we dreamt of vertical as flight. As I know, Yet by 1930, last, we were still at the dawn uh, of the practical rotorcraft. Pitcairn Helicopters couldn't lift Stephen patients Pitcairn to safety. Flying. They could barely lift themselves safely. Years the ago, necessary control is, systems had yet to be invented. And so, before the helicopter, we had this, the auto gyro. Controlled like an airplane, but lifted on blades like a helicopter, the auto gyro was a hybrid, an evolutionary missing link from which the working helicopter was born. The helicopter could hover in one spot. It had an improved control system. And as a result, a new kind of pilot. A pilot who uses all four limbs to fly walk at the same time. Watch his left hand carefully. This is really He's holding the, the machine with pitch control. As he goes up on it, straight. 
The blades act as small uh, wings, but spin and, so fast and, uh, they create one continuous disc of lift. It was a, a brilliant design, and, and that's why I think it's, it is, uh, you find it in places like the Museum of Modern Art. And, and, and when and those places, blades collectively a, change angle classic, or pitch, uh, uh, the aircraft rises or descends. It's, it's utilitarian and it's beautiful. The pilot's right hand points the cyclic control, tilting the whirling disc above. What the basic flight controls were, so we need an aircraft you could see into, and there still isn't really many helicopters that you can see into and out of, as well as this, the Bell 47. Point right, and, uh, go right. So here it is, it's still in use. All Point left, the world, uh, there's go There's thousands right. of these that are still operating, and, um, and they're, a, you know, they're a creature of the 40s. This is the chopper's tail. design it was to, to keep it. Once again, altering the angle of the blades that, affects direction. That much time in, in daily use. Uh, the chopper spins in response to the pilot depressing one of two foot pedals. If he depresses the other foot pedal, it spins the other Helicopters, way. Helicopters, of course, are expensive to operate because they, they have a lot of maintenance. There's no one in the world for whom flying a helicopter comes naturally. But practice produces pilots as adept as the aircraft they fly. By the early 1940s, the Whirly Bird had gained acceptance. The H-21 we wanted more power. is the last of its more kind, which is still flying. It's stepped in the air by a Nicknamed the Flying Banana, they, uh, this tandem rotor workhorse from the 1950s lifted trips and supplies at record speed. It's to fly. It's, it's got a uh, very... Uh, the helicopter was a success. We started to wonder, what can it do for us next? One of the most impressive uh, uh, structures I've ever been in is are the big wind tunnels at, at uh, NASA in wind Ames, tunnels like uh, these at California's NASA uh, Ames in Research Area, Center, San Francisco. New uh, helicopter ideas are tested. Which ideas air like robotic uh, high speed so that aircraft high speed uh, high performance risk. can be simulated. And advances uh, in quiet static technology. aircraft so that they can measure the forces. And many, many aircraft are, are developed in that facility. It's a it's an extraordinary uh, uh, facility which is I think a bit a bit ignored uh, just because it is it's not really but not all the complexities pads, of helicopter the, flight can be modeled in smoke or uh, mathematics of the word NASA and uh, and uh, the small a in NASA, they call it. Um, but it's a the it's a XV-15 is really an experimental rotorcraft and work and of course it's the parent of, of a new family of aircraft called tilt done a lot of analysis to make possible is is this future of, of rotor aviation. Here we go. Taking and, uh, off and landing and like a uh, helicopter, its engines can pivot forward more, uh, in flight, turning a helicopter into a high-speed airplane. Mature as the technology becomes more mature because you don't need an airport. You, you could land these things uh, on the buildings in the downtown core. The V-22 uh, Osprey has wings that swing uh, and rotors that fold to, to facilitate storage city. at sea. Certainly for, for areas where big cities are clustered together as they are in Europe, you can imagine this being It's still a tilt rotor, but faster, with three times the range and over ten times the payload that, of its predecessor. Uh, bottleneck that you always have about getting to the airport, it. getting to that flow, it takes you, it takes you half your day just to get to the plane you're going to take your ride on. In less than 90 seconds, you get this. The promise of long distance travel without airports. Is that it's a kind of a hot riding culture where everybody can be an inventor 
and and uh, I think that kind but of rotocraft evolution kind of concept, is also in the hands kind of, of the entrepreneur. Is what what produced a, a, a new approach to rotocraft. That independent spirit takes flight in this gyro. Yeah, they, they really looked at the, at the great uh, example that was set by the, by the auto gyro as a While some platform, designs produce groundbreaking change, this aircraft brought the economy and safety of the auto gyro uh, into the 21st said, let's century. Do this, let's bring this up into the, into the modern age and, uh, and uh, re examine it. And it, it is a, a very stable platform. I was able to sit in it uh, when we were flying and we could actually we're take being my watched. hand off the collector. And by someone and who's the invisible. The main stable is at least on radar. Comanche's rigid rotor, single skin, and enclosed fan tail make it agile so and stealthy. It, it was a revelation to fly and a pleasure to fly in it. And, uh, and, uh, it's I smart. Do well with it. It's fast. Uh, it's uh, inspiring little machine. And ready to win the game of hide and seek. Well, I know they say that the, they say that the last fighter pilot has already been born because robots are advancing so quickly. But certainly, if there's one machine which represents where is the enemy? The apex of, of where uh, where are my friends? Manned aircraft, a manned machine can get to its command. Command will be the first to know. It was scary. Thing and knowledge means survival. Amazing. The helicopter is a complex flying creation, situation where you've got a revolutionary tool being with a human being at its heart. To the pilot and, and, uh, every hour and of every day, it extends our powers, is, is, fires is our imagination, not just from his own senses, but work. from but from the senses of the aircraft Five itself. Miles and and uh, so it's a partnership. Out over the Caribbean, U.S. Customs is on watch. Roger that. Looks like over 25 bales are still dropping. In the United States, where, where helicopters are employed every day, uh, is in We've got a go the, fast boat the, coming the, in for the pickup. Battle to secure the borders. Well, we shot this uh, down in the Miami area. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a constant pressure, and uh, there's, there's so much money in it that, that people are trying all the time. And, uh, and the helicopter is a key component in, in a situation like that, where where you've got to respond in very short order. If 
They don't back down. We get creative with the river wash. Whips up the sea spray, makes it real hard for them to navigate, and that buys us time. Let me know when they're in the water. The helicopter extends the long arm of the law. Well, when I heard that, that and empowers use this white knight to on a quest men, to keep uh, the juice flowing. Them off onto high voltage uh, transmission lines. I, I was just a bit confused. I didn't quite understand what people were saying. I don't end, give so two hoots and a holler about it flying wasn't really inside until a helicopter. And Put me out there. That's that where I want to be. What a, on the magic what a great sequence carpet. this could be in the sh in the show, and and uh, there really isn't anything like it that I've ever seen anywhere before. It's a uh, it's a small little cadre of highly specialized uh, pilots and linemen who work together to to fix uh, the big transmission lines without ever having to turn the power off. So back in the so it late was, it 1800s, was just, uh, there was a gentleman was, by the name of Michael Faraday. A lot, of, theory, a lot of fun to meet the characters a man that in a are metal involved cage in this kind of thing because it that seems cage a, at whatever a bit nuts when you first uh, think live. of it. I mean, the combination of, of uh, live the uh, voltage would flow transmission around. lines and, and aircraft is not, this, is not the first combination that you imagine. It's, uh, it's something that all pilots stay away from. It's, 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 to work with ag rotors and, and, uh, and PPL, uh, I wear a hot this suit. It's uh, 75 percent no max for a fire uh, retardant and 25 percent stainless steel thread. It was something that everybody that metal seemed thread to want means to I do. have a so, Faraday so the cage around me. There for us to get a half it. a million and, uh, volts pass over my body, but I can work without a striking uh, application of a machine that nobody ever would have suspected was possible. And, uh, as and long as the helicopter is isolated so from ground, we have the ability to bring ourselves to the same day. voltage potential as the line, like a bird on a wire. Our pilots are very smooth. It's like they can read our every thought. Well, I think it's pretty clear that this is, this is not the kind of work that everybody would want to do. There's such a but, hunger uh, for electricity these days. As with a lot Nobody of these things that seem dangerous or that, just that, that, that do have dangers associated with them, there's a there's you know there's a, a, a layer of expertise and experience which brings the dangers under control so that people can do these things safely and effectively and consistently. And and the I've people that do people them, ask me, uh, do you think what you do are, is safe? Are characters. And I say, well, people in our operation, will, everything that we do, everything that we make, and, is uh, thought of and rehearsed before. So it's as we safe found as crossing that, that the street. That was the case at Agro. It's not a job for a hot dog. The linemen who who got out onto the wires and and with the the uh, the pilots who will hold that aircraft. Uh, and within a couple of feet of the There's water only three things I've ever been afraid of. Half an hour or 40 minutes. Electricity. Time. Tremendous heights, concentration to hold a hover. And with that, that, and that and small I'm married box too. for all that. Floating above the forest, the 12 ton weightlifter selects a target with precision. It's kind of like looking down well, 25 stories and picking up a telephone pole. A it's, uh, Ideally, uh, when you come over the top, you're stationed uh, perfectly above it. But odds being what odds are and, and the wind being what it is, it's not always that easy. It's really just uh, engines and rotors and gas Log 
the fin rather than seeing the hillside get scarred up. Again, lifting straight out of the forest. Anytime we do. You're not we scraping it up the hill, you're not eroding the soil. It's so much cleaner on the environment. Tremendous ideas they're doing this all the time. And they're just inventing people, you see. It's kind of like flying a bus. You got to plan your movements out. It takes a moment for it to react. What it does, it's a serious reaction. Which is unique or different. The unique thing about this helicopter is that when we take off the ground, we're approximately 22,000 pounds. First person We're rigging for about 26,000 pounds. Camera on a log so the load actually weighs more than a helicopter. The camera on the log was, was it's uh, exciting and harrowing all at the same time. They're just a great bunch of guys. They're like a family. Right there. And they, they, they obviously enjoy their work with their pride. And, uh, and they do they do an wonderful job. I've got to do sometimes pretty, pretty uh, difficult circumstances. And, uh, this type of lifter was built to haul else, a very uh, different cargo. It's, it's quite when loaded down with troops, down supplies, and armor plate, it still plays a role on the helicopter's uh, biggest stage. To, to do a delicate task. This recon team is at the focal point of a mission to gain valuable intelligence about the enemy. Call sign, Shamrock. Condor 1-4, you're clear for takeoff. Roger, Condor 1-4, clear for takeoff. Sequence actually are shot at different oceans. Ugly, 0-0, Red Lion, 7-7, we're going to lift you in that order. Roger, sliding left. So jazzed to be able to get it. Wind, 10 degrees, 4-9, 4-9. Just to see how they do it. We're looking good. Coming up ahead, half a mile, left 10. Bulldog 1, this is Condor 1-4, we're right on time. Condor 1-4, Bulldog 1, roger. Sergeant Kennedy. He's first in 
Latch uh, out. Fast rope. First line. Insertion of a, of a weak line. Second line. Third line. Uh, escorted in with cobras. And, Fourth and, line. And then extracted. Uh, By the time you get to touch rope in a live situation, you and your uh, men can go tied to the fan. Your fates are tied with the uh, strands of the rope. It's something that could be. And of course, this was a challenge all through this film, was to find, was to find. Two uh, hours later, Yannicky and his men have completed the their mission. Drop in on, now, on enemy forces are tracking them on the ground. Legacy, legacy, And get a chance to understand not just what they're doing, but a little bit who they are. How would they do extraction Chips. even more than insertion is when you need speed. You've been awful quiet, down and one suddenly you're It's a relief to get out, it's just but everything so slows air, down while you're exposed. Incredible. Holding your breath for that happy ending. Put out. And uh, and so indeed we uh, we did uh, and when you get a couple it, of lenses trying to trying to feel on top of the world. Our, uh, our recon team being distracted out of, out of the river. Of course, then uh, we got to commute they, home. The, uh, the just like everybody else. All over the place and just drowned it. What a view, what a ride. Sometimes, is, uh, something is, very uh, different must be delivered behind enemy lines. Uh, that's available in the something precious and desperately needed. Food. Sierra Leone is we a country to find that has suffered years of conflict. We wanted to find a way to talk about the number of lives that have been saved by helicopters uh, over the years. And, and, I find um, it extremely tragic and that people it, are still it was, starving it was difficult to, to really to find a they live from day to day. A venue for that. If um, they are attacked, uh, if they are we displaced, to do is if to they show have to move the from the areas that they have access to their food, uh, then that's when the process starts. That's when they start losing the weight to cope. About the size of a C-130 Hercules in terms of its payload bay. The UN is here, uh, you know, not to favor and really one side over another. Together, I mean, we're here, uh, here basically to West end a conflict. And to try to get the parties to settle the difference and uh, to try to return a country to peace. History of, of, uh, violence, uh, Infrastructure for roads in this country is very period. minimal. So it's um, imperative that we uh, be able to move troops in and also the supplies and equipment they need by air. This is the world's largest are, helicopter, are to hoard and I'll tell you, without it, uh, we certainly would be uh, lost in this country. people around the world are trying to make money from these from these diamonds, um, and so it's created tremendous poverty. From the food uh, depot to the hotspot uh, for the people, as, as they get dislocated by these rampaging armies that go. Island the itself, it is kind of an island, and, uh, so a safe island surrounded uh, by areas ago, the, that are the unsafe. UN went in with a fairly large and for that force reason, to stabilize the country, and now a they're, sort of they're involved for very vulnerable in, in trying to disarm and feed the people and, and uh, you have a get, get everybody program back that onto their farms where they can survive on their own. Care. So and all a big part of, of moving the food, moving the, the supplies, and, and stabilizing the area, a lot of that is really done from helicopters because they're the only machines and the which can, under five are which can always the first move people ones around, us, around the uh, country quickly enough to, they die to make a difference. And, and these giant MI-26s are crucial for moving big, uh, some vulgar, uh, large some oil, and some people, split large piece. amounts of supplies, large amounts of food. You give them the helicopter very basic, really the, basic things that can give them a lot of hope. In a country like this, where the road life. system simply is impassable for, for a good part of the year, because we're talking about Equatoria, Africa, where the, where the, where the rainy season really uh, makes Around the Around the world, track. millions of human Africa. lives have been saved by helicopters. In South Africa, they are helping to save a wild animal from extinction, the black rhino. Protected in a few remote preserves, their numbers are rising. But if the rhinos feel overcrowded, they will fight to the death. Some must be relocated to safe habitats. Easier said than done. 
there's only about 3,000 black rhinos left in the world, which makes them extremely endangered. Just going in. When we arrived in Jordan, we transferred every three years of the Astar helicopters and, and okay, there she goes. Oh, several hundred uh, Astar okay, helicopters and several hundred Astar 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 helicopters. When you are darting animals like black rhino, there's this immense trust between myself and Peter Tyler. To see that country. Well, I know way. exactly what he's going to do and where he's um, going to place me. And I don't have to think. And at the end of the ride, we, the we animal. made this uh, I just know uh, he's going to put me there in the right spot uh, at the right an time. Amazing team of, it's of almost that he senses is what animal's going to do. In, in that way, in he can change the animal's mind with his helicopter. And uh, tagging, uh, working with wild, uh, big wild species like the black rhino, which are a dangerous animal. Um, I'm going in for and, my dog. Uh, and are able to do that, you know, without, without uh, intruding nearly as much you know, on the working animal with these as animals, one's got to be necessary. very careful so, at all times. So, uh, you, know, you don't want to waste an animal's life. Game management in okay, uh, Africa are you now happy? is yeah, very much uh, a helicopter You uh, guys can move, okay. The one perfect, that you've got here is a female, and we would like to try and sling her. Get, get in quickly, they can, for they can plant the dart where it needs to be reliably. The helicopter is actually now uh, a part of do the manipulation, so take I don't the blood samples, think get everything flying. they need. Get the animal I feel woken, extremely comfortable in the helicopter. Get out of there before I can read the animals and understand them, and I've got the patience to not when to push them too hard. From a truck, um, likelihood of ever getting to the animals. Jerry, I think you can move in Little slide. enough, or even find them. Yeah, she's done. Uh, Africa is just like so a, big. The one that we here with me, please come. Sure. So Once the animal is uh, darted, we that, that try to get to it as soon as possible, else, make sure it's breathing well. In the world that We've been collecting kind of blood samples, horn samples, yeah, uh, spin samples from the earmark. Tremendous concern for the animals and all these will be used to its full extent they're to get as much information as possible. They're working for the survival of the species. And, uh, it's a, certainly a species which has been pressed almost And to that will make it possible to manage them in terms of relocation. And the poaching threat never goes Black away. Black rhinos need space. Give an inch to those it's not an animal that survives very well in zoo situations. In there. Um, and, uh, and so this is really the only thing that is to keep the species uh, Every animal in some sheltered is areas just so valuable. Viable. And any information that can be collected on them it's worth its weight in gold. Every helicopter crew is in a race against time. Every mission has a limit. But some crews push that limit East out North into Carolina. the unknown. What's this? It's the location that we were, that we, uh, we were able to work with that air station to, to recreate a a uh, scenario which had happened to them a couple of years earlier and, and, uh, and it was we were working in tandem with a C-130 Hercules that day our mission was to search and rescue two brothers whose 26 foot sailboat was taking on water they were about 250 miles out real and and uh, in February, to help us to we alone in the Atlantic that portray the kind of kind of work that they do and capture the, the kind of uh, uh, environment that they do and, 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 and it was very difficult, difficult to, to, to do a helicopter rescue sequence. One sentence doesn't exist for a rescue swim in the night time. Is, sir, All they can't these do it. They won't ever say that, pull off, especially uh, if they see uh, the survivor. You know, and it's their survivor, it's uh, personal. If you, you're on a sound stage in a Hollywood movie uh, where you've got model helicopters, but to try to do it with real helicopters, big machines like, like the Jayhawks, uh, with the real people doing things, it's... it's uh, Everything comes it's down to one it's, tight knit and it's... Uh, it you make the confirm the, plan as a group. the commitment of everybody involved. Adrenaline can get to you. Bob's first time out, he jumped without his fins. We've been calling him Flipper ever since. Wonderful. I have a visual on Wonderful the clock at 75 yards. They've left the vessel. Roger that. Give me a checklist for a few for the deployment of the rescue swimmer. Roger. Preparing the hoist. Set backup pump on. Backup pump is on. Set hoist all. Hoist is all. 
checking swimmer. Swimmer's ready? At night, the sharks scare me. I don't pretend I'm not afraid. I work within my fear. I prepare for it. Rescue swimmers prepare for everything. when fate steps in. Let's, uh, let's head on out of here. Let's depart the hover now. Be advised, we have a fail point and we are bingo fuel. We completed our emergency procedure, leaving the rescue swimmer on scene. I knew I'd be in the water for a while, but I wasn't thinking about sharks. I was thinking how glad I was that we got those guys out. If you lose someone, it can haunt you for the rest of your life. I've never lost anyone, so I sleep at night. Well, most nights. When they radioed us, the flipper was all right, we were just so grateful. When it's one of your own men, you feel it even more. You realize what a privilege it is to fly a helo. It's a chance to make a difference in someone's life. It's the most beautiful sound you can wake up to.